Whenever we work with neural networks, there is a concept that we just cannot escape. That is the concept of activation functions. These days, the networks are getting deeper and deeper, but we still activate a layer before sending it as an input to the next layer. Why is that so? The correct answer would be to provide non-linearity to the network. Well, that is mathematically correct, but what does that actually mean? And what would happen if we omit the activation layers altogether? We'll address that in this video. So let's get started. There are various activation functions used today, such as sigmoid, step, or relu function. We'll focus on relu in this video because that is the activation function used by default these days. Before moving on to nonlinear data, let's fir first look at linear data. So before learning about neural networks, we generally learn about linear regression and li linear classification. So here is a simple linear regression problem. The data is linear and the prediction is a straight line. That does a pretty good job of predicting the function. So this is linear regression. In the same way, there's a linear classification. Uh, this is a binary classification problem. There are multiple ways of classifying this data. So there are various fitting lines. It seems that the red line does the best job of classifying the data. So these are linear classification and linear regression data. But mathematically, what is a linear data or a linear function? According to formal definition, a linear function from the real numbers to the real numbers is a function whose graph is a line in the plane. So it's pretty easy to visualize linear function in two dimensions. Let's look at it. So this in front of you is a graph of a linear function in two dimensions. The formula is y is equals to mx plus c where m is the slope and c is the y-intercept. But it gets really difficult to visualize this in higher dimensions, such as 3D, 4D or 5D. But in all practical cases, whenever we work with neural networks, we'll work with data with high dimensions. So let's assume that we'll work with n dimensions data and n might be very large. So how do we visualize that? Well, the simple answer is that we cannot visualize that accurately. So what we need is, is a concept or a property of linear functions to study that. So characteristic property of linear function is that when input variable is changed, the change in the output is proportional to the change in input. So we'll use this property to understand more about linear functions in higher order. And here is a linear function in three dimensions. So as you can see, it's just like a plane. Moving on, we use neural networks to predict nonlinear data. This is what neural networks are used for today, to predict complex nonlinear functions. So this is the basic structure of the neural network. It is a simple one hidden layer neural network. The first layer is the input, the second is the hidden layer which is activated and then that hidden layer is used to calculate the output layer which is again activated. So let's look at the calculations involved to predict output using the input. And this process is called forward propagation. So let's assume the input is a vector x, hidden layer is h, the output is y and weights are w1 and w2. To calculate h, we use dot product of x and w1, add y's to it and then activate that. We again use the same method for calculating the final output y. We first use the hidden layer and calculate the dot product between hidden layer and w2, add bias to it and then activate that function. Now that can also be written as the activation of activation of the first hidden layer and add bias to it. Now what, what happens if we remove the activation functions and bias? Well, what we get is linear function. So on removing activation functions, no matter how deep the network is, we'll always get a linear function. And that is really easy to see as y is just the product of x and w1 and w2. We can add w3, w4, no matter how many weights we keep on adding, we'll always get a linear function. Moving on, let's try to predict the exclusive OR function. We'll first use a neural network with activations and then 
a network without activations to see what exactly happens when we activate a, f a network. So what is an exclusive OR function? It is an operation on two binary values when exactly one of these binary values is equal to one, the, ex the exclusive OR function returns one, otherwise it returns zero. Let's look at this graph. This is, this is the function that we are trying to predict. Now it's pretty clear that we cannot use a linear function to predict this. So we need a non-linear function to separate the boundaries. That's when neural network com comes in. So an ideal discriminator would predict something like this. Now let's try to see if we can do that. But first, let's understand the ReLU activation functions because we'll be using this in one of the neural networks. So ReLU of x basically just calculates the maximum of 0 and x. So if it is a negative value, it is clipped to 0, otherwise it returns the same value. The graph looks something like this. All the values are clipped to 0 and then we get a linear, linear graph. A function activated with ReLU looks something like this on the right. And without ReLU, function is basically a linear function. Moving on, let's look at our pre-trained network with ReLU activation. So let's assume that we have already trained the network, we have already optimized it, the network with ReLU activation. So here are the waves that we have obtained, and here is the ideal output that we want to obtain. So the exclusive OR of X is 0, 1, 1, and 0. That is something that we want to obtain. So let's compute the predictions x times w1 that is the dot product between x and w1 that's the weight one the parameter and bias added to it we get this vector now let's try to activate it using the relu activation functions what we get is this new vector where minus one is turned to zero it's clipped to zero now this vector is also the hidden layer now let's use this hidden layer to compute the output we basically need to get the dot product of the hidden layer and w2 and as you might have already noticed this is the desired output so the network works fine with relu activation now a network without activation well on optimizing a network without activation you'll get various outputs all of those outputs will not predict the right function but here's an example from the deep learning book by ian goodfellow so on the left you can see the original x space, the original function and on the right is the function predicted by a neural network without an activation function. So as you can see it does not do a very good job of discriminating zeros from ones. So it could not predict the exclusive OR function. So what's our takeaway? A neural network without an activation function is essentially just a linear model. The activation function does the non-linear transformation to the input, making it capable to learn and perform more complex tasks. So this basically means that no matter how deep the neural network is, if there are no activation functions, it will just be a linear model. Let's experiment with another function. So I have implemented two PyTorch models, one with activation and another without activation. So here's the definition. Here's a model with ReLU activation. I have named it model with activation and here's a very simple code that implements a sequential model in PyTorch. So if you're not familiar with PyTorch, you can always go to my channel and there's a playlist for PyTorch for complete beginners. So I won't go into much detail for explaining the code. I'll assume that you are capable of implementing simple PyTorch model, even if you're not seems pretty straightforward. There's an input layer, then I'm activating it, and then a hidden layer, then again it's activated, and then the final output layer. Then the same model without activation. I have just omitted the activations. The rest of the things are just the same. And it's called model without activation. Now, let's look at the training process. How have I trained it? The function that I'm trying to predict is a squared function. The optimizer used is stochastic gradient descent. Learning rate is set to 0.01 and 
it is run for 300 epochs. Let's plot the graphs of the predictions. So as you can see, one network has predicted the function almost accurately and the other function has predicted just a linear function which does a very bad job of predicting the function. So you might have already guessed which is which network. So the first, the first graph is of the model with activation. And the second graph, which basically tries to predict a square function with a linear line is the model without activation. So as you can see, we have just omitted the activation functions and the network starts performing really bad. It, it has just become a linear predictor. So that is the power of activation functions. So no matter how large the network is or how complex the mathematics is, if you just remove the activation functions from there, the network will just predict a linear function. So that is the essence of activation functions. That's it for this video. There are various other upcoming topics such as implementing YOLO v3 from scratch, where I'll explain the research paper and then we'll implement our own detector, a real-time object detector from scratch. And then I'll also cover deep convolution GANs research paper and then the original artistic neural style transfer paper. And there are, there's a lot more coming. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.